Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to click below to subscribe and share. It's not just about the photograph, it's the outdoor experience. Keep in mind everything that you need to know about photography, f-stop, shutter speed, lens selection. Nice photo, I've got beautiful light now. Oh my God. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. Revered by biologists across the globe, the Florida Everglades is believed to be one of the most diverse and pristine ecosystems on the planet. Over the next couple of episodes, myself and wildlife photographer Jason Hahn will be traversing three distinct areas that make up this magical place. We're going to start off in the freshwater cypress swamps, make our way out to the brackish water mangroves, and then on to the saltwater estuaries. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure starts now. This week I'm fortunate enough to have Bruce Hitchcock guiding us around this area of the Everglades. Bruce, thank you so much for agreeing to be with us this week, man. Glad to do it. Good. Tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into this. I've been guiding here in the Everglades for just under 20 years. Uh, I was a fishing guide, photography guide. Uh, I've always been very interested in photography and gotten more so as I've gone along. Mm -hmm. um, it tends to be where the business is right now. The ecotourism and photography is huge. Right. Well, y'all have a wonderful place to, to Absolutely. have something like this. Yes, we do. Well, what do you have planned for us this week? We're going to start out up in the cypress swamp and work our way down through the cypress swamp, through the grass prairies, through the mangrove tunnels, out to the Gulf of Mexico, to the outer islands. So we're pretty much going to see a little bit of everything of the Everglades. We're going to see a little bit of it all. Just hit me. Ooh, it's cold. <laughs> the detailed shots in here. The yeah. opportunity is incredible. Oh yeah. I hadn't been 20 feet and I see 40 shots already. Well, and you, you're gonna see a whole lot more. I mean, this is the orchid and bromeliad capital of the U.S. and not the world. And you got 44 different species of orchid, 14 different species of air plant, animals and plants that you're not going to find anywhere else. It is beautiful. The 
Jason, this looks like a nice little spot right here. A nice big opening. Yeah, it opens up pretty nice right in here. And we got some really pretty light coming in you know, right now as well. Yeah, look at look at that tree right there with the air plants on them. Yeah, if you want uh, to see air plants, this is the place to do it. Yeah, well, I mean, you look all around there, you see little clumps of them everywhere around yep. here. And, and it can be kind of a tricky place to shoot because there is so much. Um, you've really got to make a sense of chaos. There's uh, so much going on here. So to try to isolate scenes and, and cut just small slivers out of this great big um, forest here. It's just like shooting in the Amazon jungle. When mm -hmm. I was there, it was so busy. There's so much going on. Oh, yeah. Um, it can become a very, very ugly picture real right. quick. I right. mean, the human eye justifies a lot of stuff. Yeah. And um, so in a situation like this, like I'm going to use these ferns here in the foreground uh, to kind of, you know, give it some depth and separate it. Mm -hmm. If not, it's just going to look like a wall clutter. Yeah. You know, it, it's a hard place to work, though. You know, as cool as the light is, it's something that, you know, you really got to work with the light here. Um, great place for the HDR technique, the mm -hmm. high dynamic range, taking multiple shots and stacking together for one exposure because we've got such brights and such deep Dark. shadows. Yeah, and to try to get detail into these roots but not blow out the sky. And I find that using HDRs in here and using them well because I don't want to, you know, sometimes with HDRs they can look a little fantastic, a little too yeah. fake. People take it, yeah. a, take, take it too far so sometimes. So I want somebody to look at that shot and go, wow, how did he do that? That's really cool. Not well, look at that HDR. Right. You know? So right. really using good technique in here is, is, is critical. Yeah, all you want to do is just expand that tonal range exactly. so you can see detail in these shadow areas. Yep. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, this is really nice. I'm going to grab a couple shots. I love how lush and green these ferns are. Yeah. The colors in here are unbelievable. You know, you got lush greens and then you get actually got some red tones in the black water mm -hmm. um, we're getting a little bit of blue from the sky reflecting off the water and this is a good opportunity to really work with your white balance to control your colors it's really easy to get color casts in here especially on an overcast day um, all this heavy foliage really filters the light and you end up with your, your browns look very dingy your greens look very dingy if you just go with like an auto white balance so i use uh custom white balance tool, um, but you can also, you know, jump to shady or cloudy. And that's one of the, the values of shooting in RAW is if you if you do forget your white balance, if you're shooting in RAW, you can you change it. it after the fact. But, right. you know, ultimately a custom white balance is going to be the most accurate for the, the given light condition. Is that a clamshell orchid? Yeah, it sure is. It's in bloom. Looks like it's been in bloom for a little while, but there's still some really pretty blossoms on it. Wow, look, look how delicate it is. Yeah. It's amazing the, the variety between the different orchids, how different they, they each are. From my angle, I've got clutter right behind this beautiful orchid. And um, so I've really, it's distracting any other angle that I move other than the angle that. Jason's at. Mm -hmm. There's really no other shot. I want to just blur that out. So I'm having to shoot about a 2.8 and just really kind of focus on that sure. bloom right there. I'm shooting it at an 8, but I'm also just playing with it a, a little bit. I'm using a, a tree trunk off in the distance as my backdrop. And with that, I'm still able to get that out of focus and it becomes a nice mm -hmm. clean background for the orchid. Yeah, you got eight, six to eight feet of distance between your subject and the background. I've got six inches. Right. Beautiful, beautiful little orchid. Sure is. It's one of the many, many species of them out here. But, you know, there's a real problem with people, um, unfortunately, not respecting these, mm. um, coming out and taking them. Really? Um, orchid poaching, orchid thieves um, are prevalent and it's a real problem and uh, you know it's it's really disrespecting the ecosystem um, and uh, you know when you take them out of their their environment number one there's a good chance they're not going to survive right and, and number two is you, you deprive other people of the experience right. I and mean, it's just not right
It's a good idea when you come up on a subject, don't just shoot it from one angle. You know, explore all the different angles. What you think is the best angle when you first walk up on something, a lot of times that's, that's the worst angle. You move around, you can see something really nice, sunlight, uh, backlit and glow, making the leaves glow. You can find some really spectacular shots by doing that. What's, what's so significant about this area? Where we're at is the Fakahatchee Strand, which is, it, it's a pretty unique um, part of the Everglades uh, greater ecosystem. Uh, the strand, it's about a five mile wide by 20 mile long forested river, okay? We're actually standing in a river right now. This water is very slowly moving um, south into the, eventually into the 10,000 Islands area. And all this fresh water in here is what keeps this area alive. And what's cool about it is because, because of this water, it, it kind of acts as a temperature buffer um, so that in the winter, it keeps a little bit warmer. In the summer, it keeps a little bit cooler. And because of that, we get plants and animals here that you're not gonna find anywhere else. You know, when you think about Everglades, you don't think about swamp, and you don't think about fresh water. Right, you think about right, prairie right. grass and, and salt water. Well, this is this is gonna be a really cool trip because, you know, we're making the transition from fresh water to brackish water, mm -hmm. and then on out to the salt water estuaries. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. There. I got a foot hooked in a, in a root. And that's where it's, you just got to take your time and slow down out here. You go too fast, you carry too much stuff, you're just going to set yourself up to get uh, either a good dunk right. or, uh, or worse. So, you know, you really want to be safe out here. This is not a place you want to just come out by yourself. Right. Yeah, and you let night fall on you in here and you're in trouble. Right. I'm from the Carolinas and just like here, we have lots of poisonous snakes. Uh, in particular, the cottonmouth water moccasin. They oh, love sure. situations like this. And I know y'all are really famous for the alligator. Yes. You know. <laughs> uh, I mean, for the most part, alligators aren't going to mess with you. You know, we're not what they eat by choice. You know, they like small aquatic things. They're opportunistic predators. Well, usually it's the situation where you end up surprising them. Exactly. And, and that's the most themselves. dangerous part is that. And, and as photographers, we get so caught up on what's going on through the lens that we forget to look around. Yeah. So it's real important to just be paying attention to your environment constantly. Look at the air plants over here. Yeah. Let's get a couple shots of those. Those are nice. Right in here. This was really cool, but you know what? 
the best time to shoot any kind of swamp or jungle is uh, bright overcast days. And you know, we're getting pretty contrasty light in here now. It's, it's yeah. getting pretty rough. Yeah, we got lucky with the fog this morning, but now it's burned off. It's, it's time to call it a day here. But we got another great place to go up next. We're going to be hitting the mangrove tunnels, which are just as unique and just as cool as this. Uh, now, that's not freshwater. No, that's brackish. And okay. we're going to continue our kind of transition down the uh, river of grass here. And uh, that'll be our next ecosystem. Great. Let's do it. Can't wait. Cool. Wow, what a pleasant surprise. We got a red-tailed hawk that just flew in. He's sitting on an old stump and sitting there, looks like he's hunting for some food. All right, all right, let's ease on up here and see if we can get a shot. And when you're approaching animals like this, especially birds of prey, a lot of times your shadow will give you away. And if you look out in front of me here, you'll see the sun, I got a low angle of sun, which is casting my shadow way out in front of me. And that shadow is the first thing he sees moving. That shadow is a lot closer than, uh, than I am. So we don't want to threaten him. So far, he appears to be pretty relaxed. Wow, that's beautiful. It's wildlife. I mean, you just, you literally never know what you're going to see. When you're stalking animals like this, you want to take small steps. Just go a little dis short distance at a time. Stop, let the animal get completely relaxed with you. you. You never want to alter their behavior in any way either. So right now, he's still looking down on the ground. He's looking for a meal is what he's doing. This is some beautiful, beautiful light. Wow, what a neat opportunity. We're going to let this guy continue his little hunt, and uh, we're going to ease out of here, see what else we can find in these marvelous grasslands. It's ought to be somewhere right here. a good example of the transition from the sawgrass to the mangroves. This is really neat. Um, there seems to be bird life everywhere in here too. Yeah, and birds and reptiles. I mean, we've already seen our share of gators and good place to find some really uh, unique uh, critters out here. I can't believe how clear this water is, Jason. 
Yeah, again, that's one of those misconceptions about the Everglades. You know, you look back on the old video footage from the turn of the century about how we were going to tame the swamp and drain this malaria-infested place. And really, the Everglades is this amazingly clear water because it's gone through this huge filtration process with all the sawgrass. Right. It is an amazing ecosystem here. It really is. It is. And what, you know, like I mentioned before, you know, the health of the Everglades and this being a healthy ecosystem, it, it, it benefits us all down here in Florida and really all up and down the East Coast. I mean, the Everglades is so big that it affects weather patterns, uh, affects the salinity in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, it's a, a lot of water that moves through this place. You're talking 8 million acres of uh, at one point. With that much habitat, I mean, you know, the Everglades is full of wildlife. Sure. I mean, um, you know, all kinds of bird life, mammals and uh, reptiles. We've seen a lot of wildlife, but we haven't had a lot of great photographic opportunities yet. Yeah, it's something that you have to work on. You gotta remember right. all the animals here, they're masters of camouflage. I mean, alligators, they're opportunistic predators. They lay in wait, hidden. Right. A lot of these birds, they survive, you know, being uh, uh, their predators by being good at hiding. Right. So, but you know, this is one of those places where around the corner you could have the most amazing wildlife experience of your life. And that's Absolutely. what kind of keeps you going here. Absolutely. I mean, we're seeing a place that's coming back there are a lot of these birds we're seeing now were on the brink of extinction a hundred years ago. Alligators were on the brink of extinction. So, you know, there's a lot of success stories here, but there's still a lot of work to be done to, to bring it back to the way it was. All right, Doug, we're getting ready to enter the mangrove tunnels. These are a really cool place. You know, when you're first going in, they look kind of dark and scary, but I think they're really spectacular. And they're an amazing place for both landscapes and wildlife. Can you believe that this is completely natural? None of this is man-made. Um, it's just a little bit deeper water and the current gets through here and nothing takes root and you've got these kind of highways for wildlife. You know, you get all kinds of stuff through here, fish and birds and otters and really, really unique uh, ecosystems in their own right. This is really cool. Uh, we're coming out into a little lake, looks like. Hold up, guys. There's a beautiful little green heron right here. Okay. If you look right over his back, there's some really nice green vegetation. It's just kind of glowing. Yeah. And uh, it's, that's even though there's a lot of clutter around him, it's not that it's not that bad because it's all dark, and it, he looks like he's just kind of emerging out of the shadows. Yeah. Well, you know, we talk about having nice backgrounds, and, and sometimes there's a tendency we try to get backgrounds that are almost too clean. And I like to have a little texture to my background so you know where the animal lives. Um, sometimes if it's too, too clean, it looks a little too sterile, almost like it's a staged shot. And it's just not my taste. Now, for some people, yeah. that's fine. It's just really what you like. Right. Kind of like salt and pepper. You know, some people like a little more, some people like a little less. Exactly. I'm more of an environmental and behavior photographer Too. than I am yep. a portrait photographer. Yep. Light on him is awfully pretty. Green herons are cool. They're one of the few uh, wading birds that actually uses tools to hunt. Uh, you'll see them, they'll get a little piece of a stick, dip it into the water to try to uh, attract fish. Kind of a, a unique behavior amongst uh, wading birds. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week, and I haven't even scratched the surface of all the Florida Everglades have to offer. Be sure to join me next week. We're going to continue our exploration of this mystical place. I'd like to thank professional photographer Jason Hahn of Outdoor Photo Workshops. 
and Bruce Hitchcock of Everglades Area Tours for guiding me into some of the Everglades' best locations. More information about this week's show is available online. Remember, it's not just about the photograph. It's the outdoor experience. I'm your host, Doug Gardner, and thank you for joining me on another wild photo adventure. And professional? Oh, hang on, just stay right there. I like to take a special moment and do a jig. Host Doug Gardner, and your wild photo adventure does not start now. That's the intro. This week, I've got to <clears throat> turn around and do it again. Get used to this path. <laughs> Everglades Area Tours for guiding me to guiding me guide guide. I say you don't have to whisper around the orchids. Okay. It's okay. 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 They they don't they don't run away. Hey guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to click below to subscribe and share.